Psalm 31 to the chief musician, musician yeah, a psalm of David. This psalm is about life. The good, the bad, and life ain't good unless you got the Lord in it. You live 70, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years, they celebrate, and you die and go off into hell. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust, and that's the way it ought to be. Our trust is all to be in God. And it's a joke to have our money saying, God we trust. Yeah, right. Stop any 100 people on seven major cities of America, anywhere, and ask them what, what God, if they believe in God. I wonder what you get for an answer. Let me never be ashamed. And when you put your trust in the Lord God, you won't be ashamed. Because if you do what God tells you to do, there's no shame. It's when we step out of what God tells us, when we step out of the word of God. Deliver me in thy righteousness, Lord. Lord God, give me righteousness. Bow down thy ear to me. And what, what David's saying here about God, God is so holy, so great, so wonderful, so almighty. God would have to humble himself to come and hear a man. Deliver me speedily. <laughs> I'm impatient, Lord. I need, to, I need to get out of this right away. I need to get out of this trouble. Be thou my strong rock. And there are rocks out there that are liquid. Lava rock. Liquid hot lava rock. There are rocks that if you just hit with, with another rock, they'll break in pieces. By the way, that rock is Jesus Christ, according to Corinthians. I believe chapter 11. And he's speaking to the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, verse 1. Shall we just take the Jehovah Witnesses and just shut them up? When they say there is no, Jesus is not God and God, just shut them up. Just tell them they have not read and studied their Bible. For a defense to save me. Who else can do it? No one. Great militant nations have fallen and are gone today. How great, I don't mean great and wonderful, I mean, but how great and mighty was Germany in World War II and Japan in World War II, and they're second, third rate, they're not even rated today. And yet the nation of Israel, God's people, are still around. God's church is still going. And it has been killed, it has been tortured, it has been slandered, it has been all kinds of attack of religion, of man and the devil. And yet God's church is still going. For thou art my rock, Jesus, verse 2, my rock, strong rock, and my fortress. The fortress is where you go and be strong, be protected. The fortress is where you are to be protected. It's your city. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me. I'll tell you what that is. That's Jesus coming back second advent. What's his name? The word of God. What's his title? King of kings, Lord of lords. For David's Jehovah, capital O, capital O, capital R, capital D. As David is king of Israel, or would be king of Israel at whatever time in this psalm is. But David, in his life, had God with him all the time, even when he wasn't a king. Lead me, show me the way, and guide me. Put me out of the, of the net that they had laid privily for me. A net is, that catches you. And there are men out there, my enemy, Lord, they set traps, they set snares. And that's been a testimony for the children of God all the time. I, I, I know of some cases where great preachers of, of the history of the church, you know, they, they try to, uh, to swindle him with, with, with a prostitute. They try to swindle them, get and be a place where they don't need to be. Even, uh, I think, Nehemiah, you know, they're trying to get him in places where, you know what, I'm supposed to be building. I'm not supposed to be there. 
I have no business being there right now. And it was a trap. It was a snare. The world will set traps for you. And only God, your protector, will be, have you aware of them traps. For thou art my strength. Not barbells, not the gym. God. Verse 5 is, should be familiar. Into thy hand I commit, I commit my spirit. That's the words of Jesus on the cross. Luke 23, 46. Thou hast redeemed me, David said. God has bought David. He has purchased David. I am purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. I was a child of the devil. And God says, okay, I shed my blood. He believes in the blood. He's mine now. I adopt him as my son. O Lord of truth, Jesus said, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Shut up, Jehovah Witnesses. You don't know what you're talking about. I have hated them that regard lying vanity. How do you feel about liars? How do you feel about false prophets, false preachers? Vanity is nothing. They lie about nothing. Well, what could be a lying vanity? Uh, Easter Bunny, that's nothing. Uh, Tooth Fairy, that's not nothing. Santa Claus, there's no such thing as Santa Claus. Come on, tell me, tell me. With the world today, with these phones that have pictures and selfies, give me an actual selfie of Easter Bunny and Tooth Fairy and Santa Claus. Where are they? I ain't talking about someone dressing up. Don't tempt me, because I, I have been so tempted to walk up. We have a ball over here. They have Santa Claus every year. I have been so tempted to walk up to his throne. Santa has a throne. I have been so tempted to walk up and say, show me your ID, buddy. And call the police when he has stolen the identity of St. Nicholas, and then he proudly bounces children on his knees. Sounds like a sex predator to me. Where did I get off on that one? Lying vanity. There's all kinds of lies. There's lying prophecies and lying prophets and lying doctrines out there all over the place. You give God $100, he'll give you $200 billion. Prosperity to God. To say this prayer, God will save your soul. That's a lying vanity. You eat Jesus and drink Jesus, you'll be okay. Peter will get you through the, the golden city. No, he won't. If you pray to Mary, no, you can't pray to Mary. She ain't going to do nothing for you. That's a lying vanity. There are lying vanities in the Baptist church. But I trust in the Lord. There you go. There it is again. Twice. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy. When God has, has relieved you of something, when God has protected you of something, and you're not worthy of being protected, not worthy of receiving happiness, not worthy of being glad, you better thank the Lord. Because God doesn't owe you nothing. The only thing God owes us is a place in hell and mercy of God and the grace of God. If you're saved, you're not going there. For thou is considered my trouble. And that trouble would be a prophecy of the, Jacob's trouble with David. Read the life of David. Trouble here. I don't, I don't know if David ever had a rest from trouble. And if it was, it was very, very brief. David's almost like Paul. Life of troubles and problems. Man, yeah, I know David committed adultery. I know David committed murder. But man, he got from the Philistine. He got it from the king of Israel, King Saul. He got it from his own people. He got it from his own family. He got it from his own military leader, Joab. That sounds like Paul to me. Trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversity. All being of David. That all being uh, that we are. Our soul is forever, ever living. Once that soul is conceived in the womb. 
It will go to heaven or it will go to hell. Even if it's a premature death, even if it's an untimely death, that soul will go off into eternal life, heaven or hell. Thou has shut me in up in the up on yeah. Thou has not shut me up into the hand of my enemy. There's one time, and it's so funny we think about the story be coming around the mountain when they come. David and Saul are going around this mountain and they're not running into each other. David is on the run for King Saul. Saul is out to kill him. Jonathan pops out of the woodwork. Hi, David, how you doing? Uh, not doing good with your father chasing me. And they had a little fellowship together. There were people who got, come and help David. Hey, David, I brought you food. I brought you cots. I brought... Everyone good could find Saul, but I, I mean, find David, but Saul couldn't find David. David found Saul, but Saul couldn't find David. Thou hast set my feet in a large room. Have mercy on me. I, wait a minute. I thought he already gave him mercy. Verse 7, I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy. You know, life. I said this is about life. One moment we're getting mercy and great and wondering for God. And then the next moment, Lord God, I need more mercy. I need help. Mercy. Mercy, Lord. That's life. That's not what God intended for Adam and Eve before Genesis 3. You know, before Genesis 3, there would have been no need for mercy and grace. <coughs> Excuse me. Everything was good and perfect. The grace and mercy began in Genesis 3. When God learned of what they did, he didn't call fireballs down and blow them up into simulines. He didn't cast them off instantly into hell. So man's mercy and grace of God showed up in Genesis 3. For I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with grief. Tears. Yea, my soul and my belly, spiritual and physical. My stomach hurts. David, what's wrong with your stomach? I got so many anxieties. I got so many troubles. I got acid indigestion. Oh, I just, I can't eat. I, I, I have no room for food. I, I am just, God, please, man, it, it's ruining my diet. That's one of the things that happens when we get troubles and problems. First thing is we don't want to eat. The doctor told me when I, when I found out I have IBS and all that, he told me, he says, the very first thing your body reacts when you get nervous is your stomach. I, I'm going to say it in my terms. I, I forget how he, but he said, your nervous system from your brain is attached to your stomach, your digestive system. So you ever notice when you get that real sudden attack of fear, like your stomach, boom, that's our body. My life is spent with grief. And that's what life is. Life is not good. David would not agree with life is good. And my years with, with sighing. Oh. David, let me tell you what you're saying. Oh, oh, David, you hear what you are? Oh, man. David, you oh. David Saul's come, oh. And listen, even if you, you know something, oh, I'm fine doing well. You don't know what the truth is. You know what they are when they're not in the presence of people. This world is a veil of tears. David says one point, Lord, put my tears in a bottle. Listen, if life is so good, why do we have psychiatrists? Why do pastors have to, I mean, I'm talking about true Bible-believing Christians that are saved with Bible-believing saved family. Why does pastors have to counsel on their marriages, on their Christian growth, and, and their children, and their parenthood, if life is so good? Because the devil is so strong and so, what can I say? He's so slick. He attacks and many do not know. And many people don't read and study their Bible to know what's going on.
I mean, come on, we've been ranking the Jehovah Witnesses. Wouldn't you think from Genesis 1 to Psalm 50, uh, Psalm 31 that Jehovah Witnesses will get by the point? Is, you know what? I, I think your doctrine on God and Jesus, I think you're wrong. And history. The first date you guys said, 1914, Jesus is coming back. You're wrong. My strength faileth because my iniquity. Now he said his strength is the Lord, verse 4. Why is his strength? Has God failed? No. What has David done? David fell away from the Lord. David's got out of the fellowship of the Lord. He's relying on his strength now. Well, I'll tell you what. Somebody comes up to me, I'm going to use my gun. Bang, 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 bang. Follow oh, this, Lord God, I just, I just ask you to bless my family, protect my family, take care of my family. And as I'm locking the Lord God, protect my house and keep it safe. How about that? How about that? America's relying on a piece of steel and not relying on God. There's three gods today of Christian. Christian. The flag, Trump, and guns. Don't tell me I'm not wrong. God will tell you at the judgment seat of Christ. So shut up. My strength failed because of my iniquity. See the iniquity? Is God full of iniquity? No. Does God sin? No. David has stepped out of the fellowship of God. When I come weak in the flesh, because the devil's come in and said, lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes, I fell to Satan. I fell to self. I left God. When I am weak, it's because I have failed. And my bones are consumed. And your bones and your stomach are all affected by how you feel and what's going on with your life. If you, One thing is, if you are constantly, for whatever reason, medical or physical, whatever it is, if you're constantly down and sorrowful and tears and uh, i'm trying to think of the word depression that's not healthy now you you cry because your friend moved away you cry because a loved one died you cried because you didn't get the job whatever but you don't stay in you know, those kind of things affect you and when you're being constantly tormented by the enemy and you're constantly in fear called anxiety that's not healthy either I was a reproach among my enemies. That's Jesus. Taunted, made, you know. But especially among my neighbors. Now for David, we've been the Gentiles. For David, it's his own family, his own Jewish people, his own commander. Jesus. You know, very rarely did you ever find a Gentile reject Jesus. They were the Jews. They were the Pharisees. They were the scribes. They were the, 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 the Sadducees. And the Pharisees, God set them up. In Leviticus, we read today, the very first offering that Aaron offered. And he listened to Moses, which Moses listened to God. The very office of the priesthood of the Levites, God set up. And these men turned against God. So we see Jesus here. And I fear to my acquaintance. Very close. David had his own sons against him. They did see me without fled from me. All right. Who fled from Jesus? Ten apostles, ten disciples. One committed, went off and committed suicide. One went off angry after the cock crew. And one, only one, was there at the cross right there when Jesus died. One, John. Where was everything else? And Jesus said, listen, you're going to flee from me in the garden. Smite the shepherd and the sheep will flee. He told him, there it is. See, there's prophecy throughout about Jesus. All right, I just I don't read the Old Testament. 
just read about Jesus in the Gospels. There he is. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. Take a hundred people today and ask them about Jesus. I got this. Take a hundred public school kids coming out of the public school system anywhere in America and ask them who Jesus is. I guarantee most of them won't know. They don't know the story of the manger. They don't know the story of the resurrection. They don't know about Jonah. Not today. Here's another thing. For I have heard the slander of many. When the Pharisees went out to, to get false witnesses against Jesus, they found a ton of them. There were people that came willingly to say, hey, I... Fear was on every side. That's not Jesus. Well, they took counsel against me. That's Jesus. Every time he healed on the Sabbath, they got together. Okay, how do we get him? How do we murder him? How do we get rid of him? How do we destroy him? The Bible says. They devised to take away my life. That's all through the gospel. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my God. That would be Jesus and David. My times, good or bad, are in thy hand. That's Job. You know, shall not the Lord give us good and shall he not give us evil? Deliver me from the hand of my enemy and from them that persecute me. That's Jesus too. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant, David. Save me from thy mercy's sake. Lord God, for you, will you save me? Let me not be ashamed. You better have God on your side for that verse. And I just want to say, God, can you save me? But I don't, I don't have anything to do with you. You're not even my child. Go ask the devil. Go home to Papa. Let Papa Rome take care of you. You know, major nations that are under the Pope's rule, the Catholic Church, you know, major poverty. How about the poverty that's in India? Come on, let your cow God, let your elephant God, they're not taking very good care of you. Let me not be ashamed, again we read, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Lord, they know, for, for us, they know I'm a Christian. Then the response would be, live like a Christian, so you wouldn't be ashamed. O Lord, I have called upon thee. Let the enemy be ashamed. Let them be silent in the grave. Now we have a thing today. With our farmer's market ministry, they have a DJ. Well, everything looks like, you know, that guy, he can't be heard. We're winning, okay? That's nothing I can be, I'm ashamed of. I do what I can, and the Lord blesses. And one day, if that guy doesn't get saved, and I pray for his soul, if he stands in the great white throne judgment, he's going to be ashamed. He's got one song he sings that the angels don't want him. And he's going to stand before God. If he doesn't get saved, <laughs> If the angels don't want you, buddy, I don't want you. I want to tell you something, buddy. That, that man that preached that gospel that you hindered, I loved him. He loves me. I enjoyed it. That guy is going to be put to shame. I hope he doesn't ever hear, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. And everybody laughs. And everybody's so happy that he plays his music and he shuts us up. Well. I'm not ashamed. I go home happy and glorify God. I serve God. And God gives us great testimony, great stories, great things. Of Keep on going. I'm with you. But, you know, if I've been chastised because of my sin, it ain't God. It's me. Let them be silent in the grave. You see that revelation David has? He doesn't even know what he just said. Now, he's talking about the body, the flesh that will rot, as David's body is rotted. But let the enemy be silent in the grave. Listen, the Bible says, Jesus said, when the rich man died, he woke up in hell. He still spoke. The Bible says, be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And I assume that Christians that have gone on before us, I, I don't think they're in heaven. Shh. 
Man, I think they're up there praising hallelujah, glory to God and Jesus Christ. David's talking about the body when it's put in the grave. But that soul is still speaking heaven or hell. Let lion lips be put to silence. Death. You know what David is saying? If you lie, God kill you. So you can be silent in the grave. I think there's a hand that says something about silent in the grave, I think. David is saying, if you lie, kill him. That's the only way to shut him up. Be put to silence. Which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. One of the things are lying lips. I've been lied about. I and my, my first wife have been accused of both of us having affairs outside of our marriages with people. And it was totally, completely lies because the times that we were supposedly doing this, my wife and I were together with many people that. To proclaim, yeah, they couldn't have done that. I've been lied about, you know, things I've said, lied about, you know, things I, I taught. I have a man going around telling him I'm, I don't know what is some vicious, vile, cruel sin, and I'm a Paul onlyism. I don't think so. I'm going through the Book of Psalms. If I was a Paul onlyism, I wouldn't be touching these books. We've gone from Genesis to Psalm. We've completed all 66 books as our family. And we're going back to Genesis 1 and going through it again. He will be ashamed before God when his works burn up. I pray for the guy. I would probably assume you don't pray for me unless it's wrong things. Oh, how great is thy goodness. <laughs> Wait a minute. I thought God's good, but he's great. How can God be great in his goodness? Everything God does is great. Everything, the good of God is great. How's that? No man can, can compete with that. Which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. Very true, very true for this age too. Bible says I have a mansion. Bible says if I do right and continue to do right, I've got crowns, inheritance. I may hear well done. That's good and great. Which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. And Paul got is going to get great rewards that are good and great. By the great, good one. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. There's some things that God... There's blessings that God gives us that no one knows about until we get home to glory. I mean, we have never seen in the public ministry of the farmer's market, we've never seen anybody come out, kneel before God and receive him as his Savior. Never seen it yet. As far as I can see, I have not ever seen a Christian step out and say, you know what, I want to live right. But I don't know. The secret of the Lord is there's probably somebody out, at least one person out there who's gotten saved. I'll know when I get to glory. Why would God hide something like that? Because I might say, look how good I am. Look how, oh, I thought it was a great good God. Look, I got somebody saved. No, I didn't get saved. I didn't get him saved. I'm just a voice, John the Baptist said. Thou shalt keep them in a sec secretly in a pavilion. From the strife of tongue. God's protection. From ourselves and from others. Keep us from pride. Blessed be the Lord. Happy be the Lord. For he has shown his marvelous kindness. In a strong city. Jerusalem. For I said in haste. I said it too quick. I talked too much. I am cut off from the. I am cut off from before my thy eyes. Um, God's done with me. God's all finished with me. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplication when I cried. Right, I'm not cut off. God heard me. If you're cut off, God ain't going to listen to you. He told Jeremiah, don't even pray for them. I won't listen. 
Oh, love the Lord. Oh, he's saint. Well, how can you love the Lord if you're a saint dead in the ground? You gotta be alive. For the Lord preserveth the faithful, keeps them going, keeps them well. And plentiful rewardeth the proud doer. And that's not a good reward. Too many Baptists, too many Americans are proud. Pride leads to destruction. For a, for be of good courage. That's something Jesus would say. And he shall strengthen your heart. All that hope in the Lord. That's life. Up and down. Sometimes God hears me. Sometimes God doesn't hear me. Sometimes God is slow. Sometimes God's quick. Sometimes I got to wait for my rewards. Sometimes God gives me a little bit of rewards. That's life in a nutshell. In the Bible shell. 